Hey, I'm Brian. And I'm Molly. We're the Wallens. We're musicians who travel the world together, and we sleep in our van. In other words, life is normal. Well, it's a crazy, beautiful world. And it will not be tamed. In our last episode, we covered the time we spent in Colorado on our big journey through the Southwest. This week, we're focusing on the land of enchantment and the Grand Canyon State. The first place we visited on our trek through New Mexico was Eagle Nest Lake State Park. Of all the places we camped, this was my favorite. It was so peaceful and pretty, and at only $10 per night, it's a bargain. Being able to walk down by the lake and watch the storms come in over Wheeler Peak really recharged us for the next set of gigs. We stopped in Albuquerque twice, so we'll get to some details about our time there a little bit later in the episode. For now, we'll move on to another one of my favorite states, Arizona. We started out with a weekend of gigs in Flagstaff and Sedona, which is pretty hard to beat. And our first camping spot was in the Coconino National Forest, about 20 miles outside of Flag. We were treated to a really nice shaded camp spot at the Pine Grove Campground. There's a couple of things to note about this campground. The prices are a little bit higher. It's $24 per night for a non-electric site, plus an additional $10 reservation fee if you book online ahead of time, which we did. But I have to say it was worth it. The restrooms were some of the cleanest we encountered, and the atmosphere was pretty amazing thanks to the thick pine forest that the campground was located in. And the night sky was spectacular. So we were getting pretty spoiled after two amazing camping experiences in a row, so I guess we were due for a letdown. And that came with our visit to the Dead Horse State Park in Cottonwood. The sites are small, and everyone is really crammed in together. That was unfortunate for us, because our neighbors did not honor quiet hours at all. They were drunk, and making noise until midnight. The camp host was right across from us, and did absolutely nothing about it. Needless to say, we were ready for a break after that night, so it was fortunate that we got to head south to Scottsdale to spend some time with our really good friends Quint and Nancy. We met several years back when I played a gig in Quint's hometown, Davenport, Iowa. They invited me to stay with them if I ever came through Arizona, and ever since, they've been putting us up when we tour the Southwest. Of course, we also love spending time with their dog, Riley, the world's cutest Labradoodle. Quint is an adventurer himself. He's embarking on a bicycle trip down the Pacific coast, and he'll be documenting that on his blog, so be sure to check that link out in the description. It's pool day at the Osters. This is our buddy Riley. He's afraid of the water. This is a beautiful pool, so let's jump right in. Riles is nervous. Riles is definitely nervous. Hi, buddy. Hi. He's so cute. We had monsoons come through on several nights during our stay with the Osters, and we were glad to be indoors when the wind really started whipping. Dust storms, known as haboobs, are an issue with monsoon season as well, so that's something to keep in mind if you're looking to camp in Arizona during the summer. After a few days of poolside relaxation, we loaded up Regina and headed north to Chino Valley. We had a gig at Granite Creek Vineyards, a winery known for... Peacocks? Peacocks! So let's say goodbye for now. Yeah, let's say goodbye for now Oh, but I'll be back someday, somehow But it's goodbye for now And honey, don't cry for me Yeah, honey, don't cry for me Because of trouble that you can't see Don't cry for me 
After a fun afternoon, we hopped in the van and drove a couple hours east to Winslow, Arizona. Of course, everybody knows about standing on the corner. All right, so we're set up at the Homolavi State Park campground in Winslow, Arizona. We are not standing on the corner tonight, although we have done that in the past. This is a really nice state park. Uh, we pulled in and we were really pleasantly surprised to find on a Saturday night that there aren't very many people here and it's extremely quiet which is a very good thing um, so we've got the van and the the tent set up so we're just relaxing in our, our living room getting ready to eat some rx bars and uh, molly's over here you can see her so had a great gig at granite creek vineyards and chino valley today and now we're just winding down if you ever want to stop in Winslow, definitely recommend this state park campground. It was quiet, clean, and the feeling reminded me of Eagle Nest Lake, just in the desert instead of the mountains. This is just a, a wonderful little state park campground. So we got a, a great night of sleep. Uh, the temperature was perfect. We had the fan going inside the van, and now we're getting ready to pack up and head over to Albuquerque, New Mexico. So uh, we'll get some coffee started and get ready to head out. Our next stop was back in Albuquerque. We need to talk about food now because one of the best restaurants in the world is in Albuquerque, right on Old Route 66. It's called Tanampa and they have the best green chile I've ever eaten. Plus, they follow up your main course with free dessert, sopapillas with honey. That's the perfect way to follow up a fiery southwestern meal. Did you know that New Mexico is the only state to have an official state question? Red or green? Man, I love New Mexico. Rather than camping in Albuquerque, we decided just to drive a couple of hours after our show and camp out on Santa Rosa Lake at the Rocky Point Campground. It was a bargain at $18 including fees for an electric site. You know, everything was just fine as far as getting in late. We got here about 11.30 and, and just pulled in and uh, hopped in the back and went to sleep. So no problems there. Uh, you can see the, the lake kind of behind our, our campsite. Um, the only thing I would say, this, this seems like a pretty busy campground. There's, there's been a lot of activity. There are a lot of people camped out here with boats and uh, large motorhomes and fifth wheels and uh, seems like a lot of longer term residents, so um, not something that seems like it would be super great if you were tent camping for uh, an extended period of time, but uh, for one night for us, that uh, was just what we needed. After that, it was time to head home. It's about 1,200 miles from Santa Rosa to our place in Indiana, so we decided to stop for one more night along the way. We took the scenic route instead of the interstate, US 54 from Tucumcari, New Mexico, through the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma, and across Kansas. Give me a grateful heart and a peaceful mind. Cause I've got mountains left to climb We'll never trouble comes my way I pray a grateful heart will lead the way Our stop for the night was between Wichita and Kansas City at Eisenhower State Park. So if you watch the driving videos on the way in, you might have noticed it's it's raining pretty good here in Kansas. So we're camped out at Eisenhower State Park and we pulled in right before dark and right as the rain started up again. So we had to set up our camp in the rain. It was not fun. Um, I will say this, uh, we've got the campground to ourselves. So it's gonna be a really nice quiet night now that we're all set up. 
However, uh, just a, a word of advice if you're, you're coming to, to this part of Kansas, um, Eisenhower State Park is a little bit confusing. There's it's a, huge! It's really big. There's about five different campgrounds and it took us about 15 minutes of driving around to find this one. And also, in addition to the fee for reserving the campsite, there is also an additional $5 fee that you have to pay uh, to get a little sticker to put on your windshield that says your car is allowed to be here. So. I would prefer for that to be just included in the uh, the campground fee. So, uh, win some, lose some. It does seem like a pretty nice campground, though, and uh, we're we're glad to be in out of the rain. Just had dinner and get a night of sleep. Uh, hopefully, a good one before we head back to Indiana tomorrow. Well, we were really hoping to spend a night reminiscing about the trip around a campfire, eating some s'mores, but you can't always get what you want with the van life. One thing is for sure, we love the road, but it's always good to be home. That's it for this episode. Tune in next week to find out about some van improvements, our Goodwill addiction, and what we're up to in Indiana. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.